market turning point for Oakland going forward is the Oakland warehouse fire. They had, uh, what, last December? So for right. those of you not familiar with it, there was a warehouse in what, what you might call a gentrifying neighborhood that at one point was a milk bottlery where back in the days of the milkman where he'd deliver it to your front door, they'd come pick up the empty bottles, they'd take it back to the plant, they'd, fill, they'd sanitize them, fill them back up again, and then back out they went. So this place had been abandoned for 30, 40 years or so, out on International and 31st. So it ended up in the hands of an East Asian landlord of particularly shady provenance who rented it out to a guy who thought he was a neo-hippie, basically, who turned it into an art collective slash living space slash concert venue, all completely illegal for the space. And one night in December, they're having a dance party there to raise... Paid dance party, so admission charged at the door. Again, completely illegal. At some point, it seems likely that that all the synths and everything, all the musical equipment, overloaded one of the jury-rigged electrical connections through which they were pirating electricity from the body shop next door. The dance party was upstairs. Downstairs catches on fire. And the upstairs floor turns into a giant frying pan. And I think it was 36 people ended up dying. And this place was like, I mean, it's... If you see pictures of it, the interior before it burned, you know, total hippy-dippy, weird art sculptures and musical instruments and, you know, looks like something out of Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium and all that. But the typical hippy disregard for safety came back and got him. You know, especially because... All that stuff's forming all these corridors and all that all over the place meant that only someone who lived there knew how to get through it. And I think of all the people who died, only one of them was someone who actually lived there because, you know, they knew how to get out and the rest of the people didn't. This has been a huge scandal because this place was there for a long time. This place was there for years. And there are places like it all over the Bay Area. But the questions about how could this have gone on so long and nobody from the city shut it down, well, I don't know. What's your take on that? There is an unholy alliance between people of a certain political ideology and organized crime. It's not for nothing that places where the and I'll go ahead and use the word, the left dominates. Organized crime and corrupt unions are right there with them. It's how they operate. I have no doubt that as they dig into these things, they'll find corrupt civil service employees, people on the take, people not doing their job or being paid to not do their job and overlook problems with plumbing, problems with all the systems that make a building run. Because this should have been something that any building inspector should have poked their head in, spent 10 seconds looking around, and went, no, 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 no. Right. But the left does not care about any law which is contrary to their ideology. The only laws that they like are the ones that fit their ideology. Everything else is oppression, is the man, is is bad. And they don't care about engaging with the majority of society. They don't care about engaging with a civil, a municipal bureaucracy that wants them to comply with building codes and everything else. They look for ways to have their ideology and be protected from behaving themselves in anything that doesn't fit their ideology. We just got rid of an, a left-wing president who was exactly this. As long as it was within the left-wing ideology that he grew up with, it was lovely, it was wonderful, it was utopia. Anything that defied that, they fought bitterly. We saw this, we, we see this now with the way they're treating Trump. We saw it with the way they treated Bernie Sanders. This is 
left-wing machine politics, and I think this is what's causing uh, Oakland and the Bay Area and, and California trouble, left-wing machine politics in full flower. You can't get away from old-school Tammany Hall. No. Well, this reminds me of maybe 10 years ago in San Leandro, which is a significantly nicer town than Oakland is and always has been, but is in the same county, Alameda County. So all of the county employees that do things like safety inspections and all that are still the same ones who do them in Oakland. Now, one thing that that part of the Bay, especially San Leandro, is famous for is linguisa. There were a lot of Portuguese immigrants who ended up there, and there are some really, really nice local brands of linguisa you can buy in supermarkets there. So there was um, one run by, I think his name was Stuart Alexander. Everyone called him Stuart the Sausage King. Now, his father had owned the linguisa plant before Stuart got it. The problem with Stuart was he was always a little bit too tightly wound, and he didn't quite understand that like when the health inspectors show up, they kind of expect to leave with a case of linguisa to throw in their trunk. And Stuart didn't think this was a good idea, so the health inspectors came and saw him, and were like, ahem, and he was like, yeah, what do you want? So suddenly, with the health inspectors, the way that this linguisa factory had been making linguisa for a hundred years, all of a sudden it's not good enough. You got to raise the temperature, you got to do this, you got to do that. So Stuart, he went out and bought some security cameras and two handguns. If, if you think this is not ending well, you are correct. So um, Stuart's idea was he was going to use the security cameras to film the corrupt health inspectors. So he sets up the cameras. This second time, or second or third time they come to see him, four of them come in, and basically they're shaking him down. For Now they want more. Now they want linguisa and cash and kiss our ass and all of that. So apparently they just pushed the wrong button with Stuart. At some point he just opens up the drawer of his desk pulls out two pistols, wields them Hong Kong Chow Yun Fat in the early 90s style, and he starts blasting. And three of the health inspectors end up dead on the floor. Fourth of them, whoever was closest to the door, gets away, because, you know, the old thing about escaping from a bear, you know, you don't have to be the fastest, you just have to not be the slowest. So the way I heard it was from a friend who actually lived in San Leandro and knew Stuart because, you know, everybody knew him. He was a townie. So he was a bicycle cop, right? And he gets a call and he goes racing on his bicycle towards the sausage factory, which, again, it's unusual. San Leandro doesn't have a lot of murders. So he sees Stuart there and he screeches to a halt in front of Stuart. He's like, Stuart, I got a call that there was shots fired. What happened? Yeah, it was me. I shot him. So that's how Stuart the Sausage King ended up in jail for some inordinately long amount of time, but it'll show you there's a lot of corruption. I don't want to go down the road of, of there's a lot of corruption and, and, and what we're going to end up, if we're going to be able to save this country from it. Um, Are I, we going to be able to drain the swamp and make America great again? Uh, I have my doubts. Because at this point, I'm thinking, you know, if you look at the progression of the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire, you'll see over the course of a hundred and change years, there was attempt after attempt after attempt after attempt to right the ship, reform the system, by people who were using increasing amounts of coercion and violence to try and make it happen, towards actually a pretty good cause. And finally, the end of that chain ends up in Augustus, who marches into Rome, kills all his enemies, waits a few years, kills all the survivors, waits a few more years, kills all the survivors of that, and I think, honestly, we're, we're headed towards that. Sadly, yes. Um, and remember, Augustus never called himself a king, because the Romans were proud. They said, we've got a republic, we're never going to have a king. Imperator, the, the etymology of the word emperor, just means the general. So he just called himself the general, or the first citizen. 
So when it happens here, nobody's going to call themselves king or emperor or anything like that. It's just going to be something that everyone thinks sounds good. And it'll be, you know, okay, all you people, I'll pretend I'm not a king even though I really am. And you get to pretend I'm not a king even though I really am. Thank you.